Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over problems 1 to 5 of the January 2017 Algebra 1 Common Core New York Regents exam. Alright, let's take a look at question 1. It says which expression is equivalent to 16x squared minus 36? Now for this formula, we you want to remember the difference of squares factorization our formula. So recall that if you have a square minus b square, for instance, this factors into a plus b times a minus b. Okay, so you basically square root the first and the last term, and then you express the roots as sums and differences. Now if you follow if you look at this sign pattern alone, it's sufficient for you to answer the question. If you look at the factored state of the four options that we have, the only one that has a sum and a difference is option 2, so that's the answer. But let's go ahead and factor it out completely so that you can see for a certainty that the answer is in fact option 2 based on the alternation of the signs. So we have 16x squared minus 36. Now you want to ask yourself, is there a greatest common factor that I can pull out? If it's not obvious to you what the GCF is, you can decompose 16 and 36 completely. Okay, so 16 is 2 times 8, taking out prime factors, and then 2 times 4, and then 2 times 2. So 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times x squared. We don't need to bother about the um, about decomposing the x since there is not x associated with 36. I mean with 16. I mean with 36. Okay. So if we take 36, we're going to decompose that. Take out 2. 2 uh, goes into 36. Um, 18 times, 2 goes into 18, 9 times, and then 3 times 3 gives you 9. So the decomposition of 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Now writing it as um, a product of primes, you can clearly see what the GCF is. Uh, greatest common factor, we have a 2 and a 2 here, and then another 2 and another 2 here. So the GCF of um, 16 and 36 is 4. So we can basically factor out 4 from these two terms. When we act factor out 2 times 2 or 4, we're left with 4x squared minus 9. Okay? So this is the process for factoring expressions. Always check to see if you can pull out a GCF. If you can, then go ahead and pull that out. Now we will apply the difference of squares factorization formula here. Why can we apply it here? Well, we have a square for an x squared is a square. We have a square which is 9 and we have a difference, difference of squares. So we simply take the square root of the first and the last term and express the roots as a sum and difference. Okay, so we carry over the 4, and then we're going to have 2x, that's the square root of 4x squared, um, plus 3, and then 2x minus 3. And as you can see, as indicated earlier, the answer to question number 1 is option number 2. All right, let's take a look at 2. It says, what is the solution set of the equation x minus 2 times x minus a equals 0? To do that, we're going to use the zero product property since x minus 2 times x minus a is equal to 0. We simply set both factors equal to 0. Okay, so x minus 2 equals 0 and x minus a equals 0. Now we're going to solve algebraically for x. In the first equation, we add 2 to both sides, and that yields x equals 2. 
And the second one, it looks strange. We have a variable, but we just follow the same procedure, treat it like a number. Um, you just basically add A to both sides, as you did with 2. And then you have a um, variable solution, x equals A. Okay, so the solutions are basically what makes this statement true. So x equals 2 and a are the solutions to this equation and option number three is the answer to question two all right let's take a look at question three it says analysis of data from a statistical study shows a linear relationship in the data with a correlation coefficient of negative 0.524 which statement best summarizes this result okay so we're looking at is it a, po a strong positive correlation, strong negative, is there mo moderate positive correlation or is there moderate negative co correlation? So to put everything in perspective, let's draw a number line going from um, negative 1 all the way to 1. Now one thing you want to keep in mind is that when you're at 1 or negative 1 you have perfect correlation either positive or negative. For a negative one we have a strong negative correlation and then for positive one what do we have? We have a strong positive correlation. Okay. These are the two extremes where we have perfect correlation either positive or negative. Now what do you have if you're right in the center? If you're dead in the center at zero, what you have is no correlation. Okay, so if you have strong positive, strong negative, strong positive at the extremes and no correlation in the center, what kind of correlation do you have midway between zero, one and zero? negative 1. Midway between 0 and 1, namely 0 0.5, you have a moderate um, positive correlation. Okay, and then midway between negative 1 and 0, somewhere here, you that's negative 0 0.5, here you have a moderate um, negative correlation. Okay, so if you look at what we have here, negative um, 0 0.524 rounded up to the nearest uh, tenth, we're looking at negative 0 0.5, so negative 0 0.524 is somewhere here, it's really close to negative 0 0.5. Okay, so negative 0 0.524. So what kind of correlation describes it? It is clearly a moderate negative correlation between the two variables. So our answer is we're looking for moderate negative correlation. Option number four is the answer to question three. All right, let's take a look at our question four. It reads Boyle's law involves the pressure and volume of a gas of gas in a container. It can be represented by the formula P one V one equals P two V two when the formula is solved for P two the result is so let's say we have P one V one and P two V two we're asked to solve for V two. Okay? Now what you want to know is that P1, V1, P2, V2, these are variables associated with each other. You have a variable with the index um, in all uh, cases. So if you want to get P2 isolated, you want to ask yourself, what operation connects P2 and V2? That's a product. Okay, pressure 2 times volume 2. Now what is the inverse of multiplication? 
it's division right so what you simply do is divide both sides by v2 so you can undo the product of p2 and v2 so you can have p2 isolated and have the formula solved explicitly for p2 okay so when you divide by v2 the v2 divides there and you have p2 equals p1 v1 divided by v2 answer to um, question 4 is option number 3 all right let's take a look at question 5 it says a radio station did a survey to determine what kind of music to play by taking a sample of middle school high school and college students they were asked which of three different types of music they prefer on the radio hip-hop alternative or classic rock the results um, are summarized in the table below question what percentage of college students prefer classic rock so let's um, go over our formula again real quick for percentage of a part out of a whole so reminder the percentage of part of a whole is equal to the part divided by the whole multiplied by 100 converting the decimal to percentage okay so in this case the part is the number of college students that prefer classic rock and the whole is the college um, students okay total number of college students so let's go ahead and apply this formula to this scenario that we're dealing with here so percentage of um, college students that prefer rock as percentage of a part is equal to the part which is the number of college students um, that prefer rock we take that and we divide it by the whole okay whole is all the college students so number of college students that prefer rock is part divided by the whole total number of college students that's a whole pi and then this will give us a percentage in decimal form then we just simply multiply by 100 okay all right so let's go ahead and do it so um, percentage of college students that prefer rock is going to be number of college students that prefer rock let's go to the table um, so we have college students and rock the intersection of these two um, of this row and this column tells you the number of students that the number of college students that prefer rock which is 14 okay so number of students that prefer rock is going to be 14 now we're going to divide it by the total let's put that make a side note here number of students number of college students to be specific that um, prefer rock is 14 total which is a whole I mean our formula for percentage of a part total um, number of college students can be determined so total number of college students can be determined by simply uh, summing up the um, row of students that line up in the college row okay the number of students that line up in the college row so that's simply going to be um, a sum which is 16 plus 20 add that up 636 plus 14 okay uh, that gives us 50 
So this is hip hop, alternative and classic rock. This entire row represents all the college students that prefer the different kinds of music. So if we sum them all up, that gives us the total number of college students, which is 50. Okay, so we will go ahead and plug that into the formula. 14 divided by 50. And we multiply our answer by 100. Okay, 14 divided by 50 times 100. Well, this is a uh, multiplication problem we can do by hand. 50 goes here once, 50 goes here twice. 14 times 2 is 28. So we have a total of 28% of the college students that like uh, classic rock. Answer to number 5 is option number 2. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your preparation for the Algebra 1 Common Core Regents exam, to give us a thumbs up, your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this tutorial, just place it in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. We are going to be updating um, the remaining parts of this review series, so do subscribe to our channel so you can get updates to that and other great tutorials that we constantly update to our YouTube page. More clips can be found on mathgodserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.